You probably already know this, but mom and pop RV dealerships have been the backbone of the RV industry for decades. Slowly but surely though, they've been closing their doors permanently or selling to big corporations. And that's a little scary because these little private mom and pop shops, whether they had one location in a small town or they had like five or six throughout a state, they were really closely tied to their local community, did a lot of community events. I mean, I worked for several family owned dealerships and they were just so tight knit to doing community events and community reach out stuff. These big corporations are not quite like that. And that's a little scary in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I think we're losing our identity uh, in the industry and it's because of mistakes made at the dealership level and mistakes made at the manufacturing level. Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business. And let me ask you a question. Have you guys experienced seeing one of these small, privately owned or mom and pop size RV dealerships either close their doors or sell to a big corporation in the last three years? Let me know in the comments section. It's nothing against Camping World or Funtown RV or Bishes or General RV or any of these places. It's nothing personal against them. It's just they feel so out of touch with reality sometimes. Okay, they don't have the pulse of the local clientele. All right. I'll give you a great example. Okay. Great, great example of this. Uh, the Las Vegas market is very strange. Not the people, but it's just, it's so up and down. And there's two dealerships in the Vegas area that have it like locked down of how the community operates, where it goes, the trends, the ins and outs. And that would be like Johnny Walker RV and Van City RV. Blue Dog RV had it at one point, but got bought out by RVR, which is RV Retailer slash Blue Compass. Finley RV had it down, but then got bought out by Lazy Days. And the scary thing is that these big corporations are struggling worse than the mom and pop stores are because the overhead is ridiculous. You know, mom and pop employed a few employees that worked for them for 10, 12, 15, 20 years. Uh, these big corporations are like they're they're just a mach a grinder machine, and it's not a, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's like the most Armageddon horrible thing, but you just you gotta sit back and think: Do you want to work with the Walmart of camp of, of the RV industry, or do you want to work with the guy that you've known for 30 years and has been in the community for 40 years? That was the one advantage at Barber RV that Barber RV had when I worked for them, prior to me working for them for the 45 years in Ventura, California, that they were there. Uh, the general manager, Mike Aaron Beatty, was just so in tune with the community. And the business did very well for a long time. Now, I'm going to put 20% of the blame on the dealerships. Because there was a point in time in 2022 where somebody should have recognized that something's wrong. And I'm not talking about August or September. I'm talking about like January of 22, February of 22. Dealerships in general should have said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys built 600,000 plus units in 2021. We need to put a stop to this. But there, the, the problem with the RV industry, and has always been a problem, is the foresight. There is no foresight. Okay, it's a very emotional business. So not only is it emotional for you, the consumer, you, the customer, but it's also emotional for the dealers. There's not, it's, it's, there, it's hard to do analytics and be analytical in an industry that is driven by emotion. Okay, it's not a car. You're not going down to, you know, six dealerships in your local town to go test drive X amount of cars because you got to have a car to go to work, have a car to run a business, have a truck to tow something. It, it's just completely different, right, than your experience buying a car. 
It's an emotional purchase. It's to build memories. It's to have your own private hotel on wheels. And it's important that you guys know this stuff that I talk about because, you know, when you know what's going on in that side of the industry, it gives you peace of mind that, hey, I know what I'm buying into, okay? You're, you, and it doesn't matter. You can buy a used one, a new one. <clears throat> you could buy a private party. You could buy it from a dealer. It doesn't matter. It, the industry hasn't changed or isn't the same because parts and service are a part of the industry. You know, I was talking to Dustin Simpson about this. Dustin's up in uh, low, well, Central California, like up by Lodi, Modesto area. And we're, you know, I visited him and we had a great conversation about things. And, you know, it, it's because the big corporations have pretty much taken over most of the industry right now it's it feels like you're you're have instead of feeling like you have a partner it feels like a big brick wall is built up okay now when i worked at the factory side for the year i worked on the factory side I found out that there were a lot of mom and pop sized dealerships that deal in used only and would love to get into new. And these guys have the ability to pay cash for their inventory. They don't floor plan or take loans out for it. Well, the problem is, is managers, we're talking about general managers and sales managers of the factories. They'd love to expand to smaller guys but the smaller guys in their mind cannot and do not have the buying power to buy enough RVs from them, travel trailers, motorhomes, etc., to make it worth their while. Now, I try to explain to my GM, which I don't think he's in the business anymore, but I try to explain to him one day, I go, you know, if you have 10 to 12 small dealers that take six to eight units a year from you, that's as good as having one big dealer and they more than likely are going to do a better job at a smaller dealer a little mom and pop shop of selling your inventory than some large lot in the middle of a big city because the overhead's less you know i had a guy in orange county california ready to take on clipper and viking travel trailers i had several of them and they were like yeah we'll take six or we'll take nine and i'm like shoot if i could get 20 people like that in California take six to nine. That's 200 units sold a year. That's incredible. But unfortunately, the GM wanted just the big fish only. And the big fish are struggling and still struggling, sometimes worse than the smaller fish. And again, it's just a mindset, right? It's just a mindset. Now, I'm very sad today because um, Little Guy trailers are starting to not be built anymore. Little Guy, it was funny because I've been struggling to do my top five best single axle travel trailers. I just released uh, my top five best single axle travel trailers of 2025 on the main channel. And I struggled with it because there are so many brands that I wanted to put on that list but are no longer being built. They've been given the axe. And Little Guy Trailers is one of them. And that pissed me off because, my God. And there were some that I left off the list because they really haven't decided whether they're going to build 2025s. There's some really good products out there that are just, they, they've overstuffed the dealers or they're just such a niche product that, we don't know if they'll build 2025s and if they do they're going to build so few you're not even going to see them okay new camp is a perfect example of this new camp is a really good travel trailer and i left it off the list and most people are going to go what happened to new camp well new camp has so much product out there that i don't think they're going to build a lot of 2025s just based on the data that i've gathered I'm like, Jesus Christ, they have like a year and a half worth of inventory out there on dealership lots. And they don't build that many. They don't build like they don't build like Cherokee or they don't build like, you know, Forest River or Keystone. They, they don't build 
mass produce these things like that. They're more cautious and, and more conservative. And yet they're still uh, an overstuffed for a dealer of New Camp is five units. That's overstuffed. Okay, most of your dealerships that carry like a New Camp type product have two to three. When they have five to six, that's more than they normally typically would have because when you buy and when you buy stuff like that, like a lot of Airstreams and a lot of your niche product stuff, your big huge diesel pushers, generally you as the consumer are going to order it straight from the factory. You don't want people have walked in it. You don't want the lot rot. You're going to order it direct. A lot of people that buy outdoors RV stuff, Arctic Fox, they order it from the factory. So when you have more than a couple of demos on the lot, you begin to to see that they're not they're they're not moving. They'll order them, but they're not moving the ones on the lot. So it's very interesting how that's kind of played out over the last like two weeks, okay? And I'll put the link to the Little Guy trailer uh, article in the description box below so you have that for later. Um, so apparently I have a new troll, which is an old troll, that I assume works for an RV dealership or an RV manufacturer that hates my guts again. And I understand he probably or she probably sells one of the worst five products that I put on my list. I knew going into this because the RV industry on the West Coast really isn't hiring anybody, number one. And number two, I don't think I would last very long once they see that I have a podcast and a YouTube channel. I think that's what stopped me from getting the job up in Bakersfield. I think that's what stopped me from getting the job in Palm Desert. I think it's what stopped me from getting the two jobs in Arizona, the job up in Oregon, the job up in Washington. I mean, I've been hunting for about three weeks. So I just made the decision that I want to get paid for some of the information I'm going to share. And apparently somebody has a problem with that. I get it. Don't pay for the info then. Not a big deal. I give a lot of free info already. There's a lot of free information that I give out. That's really good information. And if you want the really deep secrets, you got to pay for them. Okay. I think $25 to act a month to access those exclusive videos are, is very fair. You know, you go to real estate conferences, you go to any kind of class, they're charging 250 to to $1,000. I'm asking for 25 bucks a month, and more than likely what's going to happen at $25 a month is after you buy your RV or after you get the education that you need, you're probably not going to pay for the membership anymore. You know, so I just thought twenty four ninety five was fair, you know. And we have three members right now on the main channel that have access to the two videos I posted. One of them is about the markup, how to how to really determine the markup, not the BS websites that you know claim they know what the invoice is. I gave the actual math in that video. I just gave away the three biggest scams that RV dealerships are going to try to pull. This is stuff that's not on YouTube for free. This is not on YouTube, period. Because what's going to happen is as soon as dealerships find out that I'm giving out this information, my picture is going to go up on every, you know, a network of dealers is going to go out and they're going to go, uh, yeah, don't hire this guy. <laughs> I mean, that's what's going to happen. Let's be, let's be real about it, right? So... Now, not every dealership tries to pull these scams, not at all, but you have to be aware of them, okay? You have to be aware of a lot of the things that people are talking about on the internet that they're not talking about too. There's things that they don't talk about. I have a feeling, a gut feeling, that says that this podcast and this channel is going to grow tremendously next year because I think, re I think, the reality is, is people love transparency. And now I have the freedom to be even more transparent. I have the freedom to 
talk about all products without getting in trouble. I have the freedom to be a little more vocal about things. But what I don't want to do is turn into Liz Amazing. I don't want to turn into Wingman Wisdom. That's not the goal of the podcast. That's not the goal of the channel. I don't want people to stop buying RVs. That's something that I'm getting accused of in emails and in direct messages from salespeople across the United States and Canada. I got one really rude email from a Canadian dealer salesperson. And, you know, I don't think people realize I read that stuff, but it doesn't negatively affect me. It just makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. When you start trolling me on YouTube, when you start trolling me on my DMs or on my email, you're just validating that I'm doing the right thing. I mean, that's what's crazy is you, I don't think you guys realize that, that you're, you're pretty much motivating me to give out more info. So why don't you get better is what I would say. So for you guys, the listeners, the watchers, whether you're a dealership or a manufacturer or a consumer, I'm not here to stop people from buying RVs. I'm not here to get vengeance on anybody. I'm strictly here because when I get emails from customers that have told me for the last two and a half years that they would have never bought what they bought if it wasn't for my channel. I still get email updates from people from two years ago. I'll give you a great example, okay? Here's the best example I can give you, not from two years ago, but from uh, January of this year. January of this year, I got an email from a customer or from an RVer that bought a Grand Design Solitude uh, fifth wheel, brand new, even with all the frame failure, frame flex things, everything else. The family bought this Solitude fifth wheel. And even with me talking about frame failure, frame flex, the dumb mistakes that Grand Design has made, the dumb mistakes they've made on the customer service end, the dumb mistakes they've made in their um, propaganda, in their, their public image about it, the people said they wouldn't have bought a Solitude if they didn't run into this podcast. It was a very positive thing. They said, we felt like we had all the information after we talked to you. They have had zero problems, zero frame failure, zero frame flex. They've had some issues which have been repaired and, and taken care of. But to hear that makes me feel good. I've had people who have told me they've bought momentums because of my podcast. So Grand Design RV should not, and Grand Design RV is not the people trying to cancel me, by the way. And I think I know why. I think even as dumb as they have been and Winnebago have been about this whole situation, how they've handled it, I think they realized, or at least some of them realized that I'm not the enemy. Okay? I'm not their enemy. I, I'm not their friend. I'm going to tell it how it is. And I think one of the things that they're enjoying is the fact that they've drummed up extra business because of this podcast. Because people are well informed. Uh, I got an email the other day from one of you. I won't tell you who it is. And they said that they unsubscribed from Josh the RV Nerd because they don't feel like he has their best interest in mind. That's not me saying that. That's a customer. I've gotten lots of emails like that. Lots of direct messages. They feel like they just he's lost touch with things. Now, I don't totally believe that. Um, I, I believe Josh is just doing what he's been asked to do. Okay. I think he's been, I, I think he's a good guy. I think he's a lot more personable than I am. I believe there's people that are going to enjoy his content way more than they enjoy mine. Why? Because I'm, I don't, I have the personality of a rock. <laughs> I have the personality of a stone standing in the middle of a river. You know, I just ain't moving, baby. <laughs> so there are some people who are right. I just don't have a personality. Am I a wannabe YouTuber? 
No. Am I a wannabe TikToker? No. But I truly believe that 2025 will be a better year, one way or the other. And I truly believe that I can make a difference, and I want to make a difference in helping you guys with your journey. And that's the goal. The goal is, at the end of the day, is the goal of this podcast is to help you with your journey. The goal of the main channel is to educate you so if you, you feel comfortable with your journey. The goal of my membership is to make a living. The goal of me doing this stuff is to make a living. I've made it a business. I've made it, I'm turning it into something that is going to be a full-time gig. And yes, it's going to be way different than Matt's RV Reviews. It's going to be different than JD at Big Truck and Big RV. It is different than Josh the RV Nerd. It's different than Miles RV and RV Miles. Yeah, it's different than those guys because they have a personality and I don't. I'm like a Terminator, man. I am a machine. (laughs) Until next time, Toolkit and Sense of Humor, folks.